It's for us, the churches, the seven churches, which is seven is God's complete number. Would you agree with that? Seven is God's complete number. Three is his working number. Seven is his complete number. So when he's talking to the seven churches, he's talking to the completeness of his church. There's only one church, and that's the church of the living God. There's many buildings out here that has church written in front of it. But let me tell you something. Any man can build a building, but only God can establish a church. Only God can establish a church. Revelation chapter 2 If you read chapter 2 and chapter 3, you're going to find all through Revelation, these two chapters, where he's writing to the churches and he says, I'm proud of you, but I got something against you. Now, we're going to start with the church in verse 18, the message to the church at Thyatira. Here's what the Word of God says. Jesus Christ is speaking it. And unto the angel of the church of Thyatira write, These things saith the Son of God. That pretty much clarifies who's saying it. Would you not agree? Who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. I know thy works, and charity, and service, and faith, and thy patience, and thy works, and the last to be more than the first. God's saying, I know it all. Jesus says, I know everything you're doing. Notwithstanding, I, Jesus Christ, have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman, Jezebel, that calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. Many preachers will say, well, this is one woman sleeping with some of the congregation And God said, I don't like that. That's not what it means, spiritual fornication. You see, when you accept Christ, you're married to Christ if you're a child of God. You're married to Christ. You bought bought with a purchase. And the spiritual fornication here, he said, church, I've got something against you. And he's talking to certain denominations. He said, to this denomination, I've got something against you. Because you allow, or sufferest means allow, that woman, Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce my servants to commit fornication and eat things sacrificed unto idols. I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Jesus is writing to the churches. Now, if he's only talking about one church... In Thyatira. If he's only talking about one church, one woman, one fornication, one eatings, then why did he put it in the Bible to us? Why are why do we use all the rest of the scriptures for the church government today? Why, when we look, read the other verses and he says, Don't do this, we don't do it. When he says do it, we do it. If we're going to receive it, we have to receive it for the church today. But let's go on. I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Any time that someone teaches you to be unfaithful to the person you're married to, you've committed fornication. Any man that would talk a woman into cheating on her husband or doing something against her husband is causing her to commit fornication or adultery. Any woman that would cause a man to do anything against her husband or his husband, his wife. (laughs) Well, in this day and time, it's hard to tell anymore. We'll get on that subject in a minute, too. (laughs) Any any woman that would cause a man to, to deceive his wife has committed fornication or to sleep with her. So when we're married to Christ, any woman that gets in the pulpit and causes a man to go against God's Word or causes a woman, women listen, to go against God's Word, any person that steps in the pulpit and causes you to go against what God has told you not to do is sowing fornication. She's trying to deceive you into committing sin. This is spiritual 
fornication that he's talking about here. Listen to what it says now. Read the word with me. Verse 22. Behold, I will cast her into a bed. If you search the scriptures and if you understand through spiritual eyes and spiritual ears, we're talking about the bed of affliction. Listen to it. And them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. Any person that sits under a woman pastor or a woman preacher is going against what God says. Because the Word of God says, I've shown you two scriptures, Corinthians and Timothy already, to where God says, don't let them do it. Don't do it. Now, two no's don't make a yes in my book. Now, I've been judged and I've been condemned and I've got to stand before the Lord myself. And I've been persecuted, ridiculed, and everything else. But I believe what the Word of God says. If the Word says, praise God, that she's not to stand in that pulpit and proclaim my Word. And He says, David, don't you sit under her. If you sit under her, I'm going to cast you into great tribulation. I believe what the Word of God says. Because the Spirit that's in me does not bear witness to sit under a woman pastor or to sit under a woman preacher. Why? Because I have rightly divided the Word. I've studied the Word. And I listen, I may not totally understand it, but the spirit that's inside of me lets me know that something ain't right and therefore I tell you and I warn you he said I'm going to cast her into the bed of affliction I'm going to cast her into the bed but listen to this verse 23 and it was 22 he says I'm going to cast her into the bed and those that sit under her or those that commit fornication with her and agree with her I'm going to put them into great tribulation problems in your life many many difficulties in your lives but look at verse 23. And I will kill her children with death. Listen to me. How many of you know in here that all of us, should God tarry, all of us are going to die? So what in the world is he talking about? He's not talking about the natural death that we have. I, the, if, the, if, the, the, if the death, if you really want to get into the Word, study the Scriptures, rightly divide it, he's talking about eternal separation from God. I will kill her children with eternal separation from God, which means her kids, her children, will spend eternity in hell because of her disobedience. This is what the Word of God says. Now, listen, I will kill her children with death. That's not a threat because we all is appointed once for man to die. So that's not, that's not important to, to say, you know, because she sinned, her children are going to die. That's, he said, because she repented not, I, I warned her, and she wouldn't repent. You see, women pastors, if you'll repent right now and come out from the sin that you're in, God will forgive you. He will forgive you. If you'll truly repent from your heart and, and study the Word of God and you come before God, He will forgive you. But if you repent not, He'll put you on the bed of affliction and He'll kill your children with death. Now let's go on to read what the rest of it says. And I will kill her children with death and all the churches shall know that I am He which searcheth, searcheth the reins and hearts and I will give unto every one of you according to your works. But unto you I say unto the rest of thy attire, as many as have not this doctrine. Now do you understand what that just said? For as many, he said, listen, I'm not going to kill everybody in Carthage. I'm not going to cast all the women in Carthage in to the bed of affliction. I'm not going to kill all the women's children with death. Only those that follow this doctrine, only those that are guilty of this sin. Can you understand what I'm, I, I mean, I, I see some puzzled faces and I know the telephones are going to ring off the hook. Dial the number and let us know what you think. Because here's what it says. He says, I will kill the children, and, but unto you I say, and unto the rest of Thyatira, as many as have not this doctrine, 
And I'm going to tell you one thing. Crossroads Community Church does not have the doctrine. I had a family a lady ask me in here 18 years ago, when are you going to start ordaining pastors? Women pastors. So when are you going to start ordaining women? I said, as long as I live, I'll never ordain a woman to be a preacher. And she quit the church immediately and has not been back. And matter of fact, she's the one that donated that $10,000 piano to the church. She said, here, God told me to give you this. And I said, fine. She gave it. And a week later, she said, now, when are you going to start ordaining women preachers? Because she wanted to preach. She wanted to be ordained. I said, sister, as long as I got breath in my lungs and as long as God 